Yo, what's going on, man? Everyone loves to hate Tesla. We got back another installment. Hurts bad bet on Tesla. Let's get active and jump straight into this video. I'm sure they're going to do a lot of lying. Shout out to CNBC. Let's get it. Uh, on the company's new agreement with car rental giant Hertz. A few months out of bankruptcy, uh, said it's going to order 100,000 Tesla Model 3s. Those purchases, total value of about $4.2 billion. In October 2021, Hertz publicly announced it intended to buy 100,000 Tesla vehicles. Shares of both companies soared. Check out shares of Tesla soaring to all time highs today, launching the company. All right, so they're already jumping in. If you guys didn't know, at one point, Hertz said that they were going to buy 100,000 cars, Model 3 preferably, for their fleet. So we're going to jump into this video and see if they actually get down to the meats and bones. This is what I always say look for these reports. And in these reports, you want to see if they provide you data and information to support their claim. The claim here is why Hertz bet on tesla isn't paying off in the u.s so specifically talking about the u.s and specifically talking about this deal and this deal is not supposedly paying off let's see company into the trillion dollar club for the first time first mover advantage aside it would help hertz distinguish itself in an industry plagued by commoditization where the color of a brand's signage seems to be the only differentiator if you or I went to the airport and we went to the green counter, the red counter, or the yellow counter, we're still going to get the same white Toyota Camry. But only a couple of years in, while the rental company is posting strong finances, its EV strategy is facing some serious challenges. Well, you're going to get the white Toyota Camry just because that's been the actual choice, the preferable choice that's been within the fleet. A lot of the rental car companies have specific cars that make up the majority of the fleet, okay? So when people pick a car like the white Toyota, of course they're going to pick the white Toyota because that's been the car that's been in the inventory of Hertz or Realtor companies, right? And of course, it's been on the side of cost saving, durability, right? People have known that to be one of the cornerstones of why people purchased a car like Toyota Camry. It's just been known to be reliable, okay? And if you're going to have to take on costs from an ICE vehicle or any vehicle, Toyota's just been the choice. But of course, with a new competitor like Tesla, like a new competitor like EVs, this is kind of different because on the side of repairs, you get a different type of picture. But let's continue. Pricing troubles, skyrocketing repair costs, and low resale value. So this is what they're claiming pricing troubles skyrocketing repair costs and low resale values we'll see about that but definitely for the pricing pricing troubles we're going to pay close attention to that guys and the skyrocketing repair costs these two things because i'm not quite sure about that and we're going to see in the video once you hear what they say values there's no technology change evs included that run a straight line without some hiccups and challenges and that's this the line from A to B is not always straight. Meanwhile, big rental rivals hung back on EV. So because it's not straight, does it mean it's not valid? No. Hertz is but that's not what he was saying. I'm just trying to make sure you guys don't make those two connections and distinctions. Investors are divided over what to do next. Either kill or at least pause the EV initiative or try to find a way to make it work. Who? kill or at least on evs hertz's investors are divided over what I, to do next either kill or at least paw i don't understand how the investors are making decisions about kill and pause of an actual company like uh, investors don't have the power just to say you're going to stop doing this company hertz a more than century old rental company filed for bankruptcy in may 2020 as demand for rentals dried up during the coronavirus pandemic even before the pandemic, Hertz had a number of challenges. Sales grew from about $7.6 billion in 2010 to a peak of about $11 billion in 2014, but fell to about $9.8 billion in 2019. Pre-bankruptcy, the stock had been highly volatile, climbed as high as $109.48 in 2014, and sank as low as $3.07 the day before Hertz filed. 
In addition to the Hertz rental brand with stands at airports or parking garages, the company has a number of other businesses, including car sales, truck, van, and equipment rentals, and a leasing division. It also acquired the Dollar and Thrifty brands in 2012. The company operates... So the company made a couple of acquisitions, but let's continue. Let's see what they're talking about, all right? They had a rough time. They had to file for bankruptcy. Doesn't mean the, cap uh, the company is terrible. It's the worst ever. Just face some financial difficulties. Don't necessarily know what they come from unless we do more deep diving into the company. But let's, let's continue. It's in 160 countries and jurisdictions around the world. 13 months after filing for Chapter 11, the company emerged from bankruptcy, unveiling big plans. When you're coming out of a process like that, you need a story to tell investors. Uh, people want to know what your what your strategy is. What's going to be different this time? Some moves were expected. Not only a story, but more importantly, you need a strategy. All right, coming out of bankruptcy for any company, you need a strategy. Securing more corporate accounts, like a big partnership with American Express, cleaning up its dollar and thrifty brands, which had suffered from underinvestment, and a pledge to focus more on cost efficiency. But the big move was its plan to buy uh, 100,000 Teslas, mostly. Again, that, that wouldn't be its big move. I think all of those were big moves, right? Um, all of them are important to reshift in the direction of the company, not just the Tesla. But once again, like I tell you guys, a lot of things that happen in the financial media is just hung up on clickbait. This somebody said this, somebody made this announcement, the stock price in this video, they're going to talk about the stock price a lot. And it's like, we're talking about the underlying asset. We're going to be talking about the company in Hertz, right? Not its stock price and who said this and an announcement came out and it went 10% to this day and for two days and then for seven days. Like, that's not what investors actually are talking about. We need to be actually talking about the company. The Model 3 sedans for its U.S. and European operations. It also planned to set up about 3,000 fast chargers for 65 markets. Both Tesla and Hertz share prices popped on the news. Hertz jumped 10% over the previous close, and over the course of the next week, rose another whopping 29 And see, guys, this is the only part where they actually give you data and information, like of like facts. Like facts, this happened in the stock market, but this is not really connected to are they failing or are they succeeding? Did the bet that Hertz made on Tesla not pay off? This is just garbage. This is what, once again, the financial media always does when they have a conversation about the market period. This is why it's very important for you investors and retail investors to come up with their own philosophies, their own approach and their own strategies towards the market. You cannot rely on any information from the news. If you do, then you must do it to be a day trader. You must do it to just jack off intellectually because when it comes down to actually making a decision pertaining to the company, they're not providing you valid information. This is not valid. Like, let me show you Hertz. Let me show you Tesla. Let me show you how they ticked up when this announcement came over. Like that happens with every single company on every single stock market. I don't know why we're highlighting this in the justification of did it pay off or not? 9%. Tesla shares rose 12.7% on the day over the previous close, and then another 14.4% through November 2nd, the day Tesla CEO Elon Musk took to Twitter to break some news. They didn't have a fleet deal. They didn't have a special contract with Tesla. And Elon Musk let all the excitement kind of go viral before he, one week later, clarified. See, and even that, even that, like, right, Elon let them get excited for one week what's the time limit that he was supposed to come out with a respond to say that they had no contract like you see what i'm saying but again this is this lady passively aggressive uh, passive aggressively or indirectly trying to insinuate that oh he let this happen he let all this excitement and this market fluctuation happen like always trying to like i said pin something on the shoulders or on the responsibility of Elon Musk. Like he's supposed to just always come out with announcements within what, 24 hours, 48 hours, lady? Let us know when he's supposed to do it. But she's once again, insinuating that he let it happen for a week before he said something like. ...that Hertz didn't have a fleet contract with Tesla. 
He added that he was surprised by the stock pop since he thought the Hertz deal has had zero effect on Tesla's economics. Again, as he always says, guys, focus on the business and the economics. According to its 2022 10K, Hertz has large scale acquisition agreements with Tesla, Polestar and General Motors, but the company neither denied nor confirmed the details with CNBC. At the time of the filing, the goal was to convert one quarter of Hertz's fleet to electric. Yeah, and see, this is more like a plan and a strategy going forward, right? It's not necessarily a contract saying we're going to buy 100,000. It nowhere says this in what's being showed. It's just like, hey, look, we have EV, large-scale acquisition agreement with Tesla, Polestar, and General Motors, right? And we have established a goal of 25%. By the end of 2024 that's it they're just talking about in goals it's no different from like an investor relation right a quarterly report an investors report where it's like hey man here are our goals right fuel efficient fleet you know and here's one of our goals and here's some companies that we've been in discussions with we said hey we're going to acquire from tesla polestar and general motors it's no order of a hundred thousand fifty thousand twenty five thousand with polestar polestar don't even got freaking the infrastructure or the actual factories to do that but whatever neither does general motors really but whatever but it's just like hey man these are our goals we talked to these guys already that's it but once again guys this is why it's important don't mind the media because the media is going to promote clickbait electric hertz doesn't break out the amount of money it spends on evs but we can make some assumptions in 2022 the company so they don't know but they're just going to make some assumptions here okay so let's clarify that they do not know but they're just going to make some assumptions and the assumptions are okay i'm just pointing it out but he ended the year with 428,700 vehicles in the americas and 118,700 international nine percent of its fleet or about 49,266 vehicles were Teslas. This isn't perfect, but if you assume Hertz paid about $50,000 on average for each Tesla, as some analysts who follow the company think, that would be about $2.5 billion in Tesla vehicles alone. That doesn't include any other infrastructure or expenses Hertz had to undertake in 2022. Overall, globally, it spent $10.6 billion on new vehicles that year. It's a real, it's a, the average is about 40 for the Model Y, but whatever. Here. This EV strategy really was the one that kind of took off and Hertz became, I guess, kind of affiliated with that. That became kind of their calling card uh, in the market and, and something that a lot of folks kind of, kind of latched onto and said, hey, this seems like a really interesting story. I'm going to follow this. These three car. Guys, again, don't follow stories, follow the actual numbers, follow how the company performs followed by things they have been able to accomplish. The stories are great, but I'm not quite sure. But net net, let's continue. Rental firms control about 95% of the market. Hertz was the only one to make an EV push this big. Hertz's intention was to be a first mover. The industry has received some- Well, technically they didn't make the move, okay? They're, they're the only companies who announced that they said they would do this, but they didn't make the move. Some pressure to green its fleets. And the idea was that it would help its corporate customers too. Large organizations around the globe uh, really uh, are interested in uh, choosing EVs for their employees. It really helps them to meet their own ESG goals. And we see a lot of um, you know, corporate demand both here in North America as well as in Europe. Hertz also saw an opportunity to introduce EVs to ordinary consumers who might be curious but reluctant to commit to a purchase outright. In the leisure space, there is also a lot of organic demand, uh, certainly for customers who are perhaps curious about whether or not an EV would fit with their lifestyle. And so choosing an electric vehicle like a test drive uh, is something that we see. And we see uh, situations where Customers are choosing, you know, an EV both for long road trips um, as well as for, you know, short, shorter drives. So positive. What actually is happening is that the customers are using the rental to kind of introduce themselves to the EV platform. So, of course, you can go to Tesla and get a test drive, but that's very short. And so when people want to do rentals and they're bi-curious, they can get 
a test drive or take it for a longer ride by renting it for a week or whatever the case may be. So she's saying that it's something that actually is happening on the ground. So, okay, got it. So slightly, okay. In 2016, Hertz struck a partnership with Uber to start renting out fuel burning vehicles to rideshare drivers. Hertz considered the electrification of rideshare. A so they said 2016. And the 100,000 fleet of vehicles didn't come out to 100,000. Just remember that. So in 2016, they struck a deal to work with Uber. But in 2021 is when they dropped the news for 100,000 allegedly being set to purchase or they bought or whatever they made and claimed. So here we go. A fast approaching requirement, not merely an option. New York City's Green Rides program requires 100% of rideshare trips to be either zero emissions or wheelchair accessible by 2030. Despite an investment of at least $2.5 billion, the expected demand from corporate and private customers has not materialized. So from corporate and private customers, customers have not materialized just from those two now the lady had already said that customers are purchasing the vehicle in order to check it out in order to test it to see what the fuss is about along evs but he's saying that it's not panned out from customer and corporate let's continue consumers generally um you know still have a little bit of anxiety both about range and some of the you know, know how when it comes to EVs. Uh, and to that end, that has really informed our strategy uh, around building resource and really helping with that challenge. Demand that Exactly. That's something that's new with all technology, right? There's a lot of people who ran around here with block phones because they didn't trust smartphones. So it happens with new technology. It's a different example at a different scale, but it's the same constant that once you introduce a new product to the masses, the masses need time. They need a learning curve. They need to understand. They need to actually understand what the car can actually do or what the technology can do from what most people would know, what is or isn't effective and efficient, what's the pros and cons. It takes time for customers, especially since Tesla is one of the largest EV companies in all of America and has little to no PR. It has no marketing budget. So therefore, the only knowledge that people are getting is through YouTubers, right? Through experience, somebody knows that somebody, like it comes from that. It's not Apple. It doesn't spend a large portion of its money on marketing and advertising. So people are going to be clueless. The did arise tended to come from customers who were already Tesla or EV owners. What has that is true. The customers that did came already came from people who drove Teslas, but also, as the lady said, it hurts herself that they also come to check out the car. So they're not also only already Tesla providers. So when we hear Hertz talk about it, Hertz is saying our official position is that people who haven't been introduced to Tesla vehicle are coming and trying the cars. This guy's now saying that it's already been Tesla drivers. There's a disconnect in those two things, and they put it in the same video. Has worked, sort of, is the ride-sharing segment of the business. Now watch this. What has worked, sort of, is the... What has worked, sort of. Now watch these numbers. Ride-sharing segment of the business. So the ride-sharing segment. So now that they take the actual Teslas, and in 2022, remember, Tesla announcement didn't come out till 2021. In 2022 of December, 65 to 70% of EVs were utilized by rideshare drivers. So this guy is saying it sort of worked out when 60 to 70 or 65 to 70% of EVs were utilized by ride-sharing drivers. So that program that they launched with Uber as another stream of revenue has been wildly successful. 65 to 70 is a high success rate. That's not kind of, that's not sort of, that is successful. As of December, 2022, 65 to 70% of the EVs in Hertz's fleet were utilized by rideshare drivers. 
they didn't want those things sitting around. They're very expensive cars. So now watch what he says. Well, they didn't want them sitting around. Well, that doesn't make any sense. The Tesla cars did not come before the agreement of the ride sharing service. The agreement with Uber happened in 2016. It wasn't until 2021 where they made that assumption and acquisition of large amounts of Tesla vehicles. So even before Tesla vehicles or EVs came into the picture of what Hertz was going to do, they had already that agreement with Uber. But the way this guy is saying it, well, they didn't want it sitting around as if the cars were sitting around doing nothing. And then they implemented this strategy and then it became effective. And even if that was the case, it's an effective strategy that is working. So it's regardless if it was sitting there on its lonely. But it wasn't because the lady from Hertz also just said that people were taking the car and they were experiencing the EV technology because they did not know. But then the guy, the narrative, the reporter was like, oh, well, most people who rent them anyways that are customers are just already Tesla drivers. It doesn't match up to what the official from Hertz is saying. And then also from the timelines of what this guy is saying when he says the cars were just sitting there. That's a that's that's wrong. So it made all the sense in the world to Hertz, right, to to say, hey, we're we're going to extend essentially extend our, our normal ride share rental program and we're going to throw Teslas into it and other EVs. I mean, I think from my perspective, Hertz and Uber has been a great partnership. I now here's somebody also that's not a analyst or a reporter or from CNNBC, none of this. This is a founder and a CEO of Rideshare Guide. And he's widely successful in what he's doing and his knowledge about ride sharing in the gig economy. And he's saying that it's been widely successful the Uber and Hertz deal in utilizing EVs. But let's not listen to the expert that's in the trenches that knows what he's talking about, crunches the numbers and data and see where the gig economy can actually leverage EVs or leverage new technology or new partnerships and actually do well for themselves. No, damn that. As the reporter, I want to talk about Elon Musk taking a week until he said something about this contract and the stock prices reflected for seven days. I think that Uber really needs Hertz and Hertz really needs Uber. Harry Campbell is the founder and CEO of The Rideshare Guy, a website and podcast dedicated to Uber and Lyft drivers and other gig economy workers. There's really no better use case in my mind than an Uber driver who's going to put 1,500 miles a week on their car to not only rent a car, but to rent an electric vehicle. Renting to rideshare companies is cost effective. There's a one week minimum and costs of turning a vehicle are substantially cut. The challenge so the repair cost is substantially cut. It is a benefit of it. That's a fact. Even the reporter had to say it, but here he goes. The challenge though is that Hertz gets about $43 per day rather than the $75 to $90 it gets for a consumer or corporate rental. Now watch this. This is what you guys don't understand, and this dumbass reporter doesn't understand also. No disrespect. He just doesn't understand what he doesn't understand. Now, Hertz rental prices. You can rent your home. I'm going to give you an example. You could rent your home. Cor a customer in corporate rentals will be considered short-term rentals just like your home. So just like your home, you could rent it from three days to seven days or whatever and get a higher return from a customer and corporate account from $75 to $95, $90, excuse me. But with higher reward comes greater risk, more volatility. With the Uber contract, it's more steady and standard. Would be in the same comparison as the long-term rental. So it's good that Uber in Hertz, specifically Hertz, has a platform where they have more streams of revenue, one based off of long-term rentals, Uber. One versus another, and then, oh, excuse me, the other aspect is short-term rentals, consumer and corporate rentals. So it's not a bad thing. And of course, they get a lower price because of the long-term, the reduced volatility, the 
constant reoccurring generating income, the 65 to 75% of fleet vehicles that are usable. But when you have customers, consumers, and corporate, they're not renting vehicles out 100% all the time. That equation is also around the 60 to 70, 70 to 85 percentile of how much occupancy or use the car has. So that's a that's a buzzer once again for the report. There's also been a disproportionate number of accidents. While Hertz says routine maintenance costs on EVs are lower. Routine maintenance costs is lower. All right. That's a fact. That's what Hertz is saying. What he's going to say is that. Well, when you get into an accident, though, the prices for Tesla to fix those said accidents are double and more expensive than ICE vehicle. But how often does repair happen versus how often accidents happen? And accidents happen way less than just annual repair and maintenance of a vehicle. You get into way less accidents with your vehicle than you do to change the oil. And to change any annual maintenance and repair. So imagine if you could save way more money on annual repairs and just maintenance versus accidents, which rarely happen. The cost of repairing the damage from accidents is twice what it would be for an internal combustion vehicle. This is partly a Tesla problem. And so it's a Tesla problem. So it's only a Tesla problem. It's not a problem with any other EVs. It's only Tesla. See, this is where that doesn't quite make sense. Why is it only Tesla's problem? Well, people can say, well, they like the infrastructure revolved around the actual services. Okay, cool. Then that's the reason, right? Okay, and it's a Tesla problem. So don't say that it costs more for ICE vehicles or less for ICE vehicles. No, it's not about ICE or EV. It's about Tesla having this particular issue due to their failed build out of services. But see, once again, guys, <laughs> A lot of these reporters can't rock with me, man. I eat them up, bro. Their points are all over the place and they don't connect and make sense. They contradict themselves constantly. Their critics will say, meaning they've grown the number of vehicles on the road. And the, their critics will say, so here again, we don't have any evidence. The last evidence they showed us, the last data and statistics they showed us was the stock sheet when it changed prices for 10 days because of the announcement that was made. That was the only data they used here. Without investing enough service centers and over-reliance on their mobile service fleet to fix those vehicles. And, so and then they'll show you 65 to 75 percent of a success rate with Uber and Hertz and EVs and then explain why it's still bad, even though they showed you good stats. So you'll see these long wait times to get, you know, spare parts put into the cars. You'll see long showing you that it paid off. Now, let's go back. She's talking about you see long times for repairs. So it's not an EV thing. It's a Tesla thing. So don't say that the price for EVs and the price for ICE, it, one is double and the other is not. You said it's a Tesla problem. Long wait times to even get an appointment. That's, that's only one tiny piece of why EVs are expensive to repair. In order to buffer some of the higher repair costs, the rental- But y'all just said it was a Tesla problem. Which one is it? Giant has taken on more of them in house while also negotiating for cheaper parts. Hertz expects costs will drop over time. However, repair costs have not come down as fast as the company had expected. In another move to try to limit damage and repair costs, the company shifted some of its EVs meant for rideshare into its leisure business. But this left a glut of unused cars in that segment and lowered revenue. The collapse of used EV values is another problem. They've fallen about 30% between September 2022 and September 2023. The main reason? Tesla, which controls more than 60% of the new EV market, drastically cut prices on its cars, driving down the value of everything else. Yeah, so that's it. That's her, right? Like, and the value is not, it's not driven down forever just because they lowered the price at one point. You understand? If the price went back up, then the vehicle is back at restored market fair value. Come on, guys. These guys are idiots, man. Yes, the price went down for a time being while they made those price deductions on the actual new vehicles. But once those prices, market fair value is restored, it doesn't drive down the profit of those cars. But we don't want to talk about the other cars like Toyota that had the same decline out of all cars having the same decline once you drive them off the lot. And Tesla is not similar like this. So this is where, once again, this guy makes no sense. Like, yeah, okay, in that small time frame, you're right. 
But once the prices are restored to fair market value or a price that the actual company is setting to say this is the higher standard now, then it's back. This is important because about every two years, rental companies turn cars over to the used market. The MSRPs on the cars Hertz bought has since dropped by about a third. The opportunity to dump the car, so to speak, is not really one that's available to us. And frankly speaking, not one that I would take. There's positive margin to be had in the existing fleet of cars. And we will buy our price down over time as these cars have fallen in price. And by the way, we'll buy more than just Teslas. These companies have. Yeah, it makes sense, right? Like, yeah, that decline hurt for that time, but it doesn't have to necessarily follow by the same model as selling them at that year time frame because the EV is not like ICE vehicles. And so with that being said, he said they'll continue to push forward and continue to make great revenue in the successful programs that y'all couldn't even give them a credit. So I like sort or kind of, but the ride sharing program. Have to report the depreciation of their assets and their financial statements even before they sell the car. So falling used EV prices hurt Hertz's balance sheets, even for cars that are still in their fleet. Hertz claims that taking into account depreciation, collision, damage, and revenue per vehicle, Hertz's EV fleet is costing the company several EBITDA margin points compared to ICE vehicles. Inve okay, so that was some information. So now it's costed them in comparison to their ICE vehicles, which quite honestly makes sense. Investors are split over what to do next. Someone. Why is investors split? Like investors don't make these decisions. This is why it sounds stupid. Hertz to pause the EV program or abandon it altogether. Others say Hertz should persist. What? When, Hertz when, when does investors just tell a company what to do? Like it doesn't even work like that. Like investors are split and they could tell them to kill it or don't kill it or pause it. Like they don't have that power. What investors are you talking about? Institutional investors? Like they don't even have that power. Like what are you talking about? CEO Stephen Scher, who inherited the EV plan when he took office in February 2022, said in the company's 2023 third quarter earnings call that it would be reducing the share of Teslas in Hertz's fleet in favor of those made by GM and other legacy automakers with stronger parts and service networks. And it's OK, so other EV vehicles, once again, going back into EV, but that's just him shifted it into GM and Ford, but they barely have any companies and businesses and services themselves. but. Whatever, best of luck with that. Most of their cars get recalled, but the best of luck of that, like, come on, they don't even have a fleet. They recalled millions of cars back that had to actually go back to the factory, not like no over the air up weight, uh, uh, airway update like Tesla. So this that's just stupid, but you know, you're, you're allowed to be stupid. In its rideshare business, Hertz is only renting Teslas to more experienced drivers in order to lower the likelihood of damage. I've driven a Tesla for the past seven okay. years. These cars have a lot of power. I'm not going to lie. I'm so? <laughs> I almost got into two or three accidents when I first got my Tesla Model 3 because I wasn't used to it. And so I think one cool thing that Hertz is doing now that we've seen is they actually require drivers to have a minimum number of trips. So you can't be a brand new driver and get into a Model 3 anymore, which I think is smart. Cars Hertz had previously shifted to leisure, where they languished, are now back in rideshare. Hertz's overall rideshare rental business has grown 50% year over year. The higher the company's doing good. It's paid off. It's grown over 50%. But this guy will say that it's lost. That this guy will say that, oh, well, the CEO at one point is going in this direction. Okay. But 50% year over year, it's doing good. Ride sharing, that's the new revenue. What are they supposed to leave it behind? What are they supposed to get mad at customers and get mad at corporate accounts that won't take EVs or any cars because they didn't have it in the first place? Like, come on. But they're not supposed to have 50% growth for year over year in the ride sharing sector because if somebody happens to get in an accident. Higher ride share demand has brought the company more revenue per unit, better rented than sitting on the lot. And by reducing the glut and leisure business, Hertz can resume premium pricing in that segment. We do see really nice demand. Uh, certainly across large travel companies um, hotels and airlines as well as large associations here no but now that we got the evp sales and customer ex experience officer from hertz she don't know what she's talking about their bet on tesla isn't paying off you could even put it has some issues or there's some turbulence but it's not paying off 50 50 percent growth and 60 to 75 is EVs here in North America, and that's that's a that's a natural organic uh, demand for these EVs that we see coming through. 
In 2023, it staged drive events at airports, including the Los Angeles International Airport and Denver International. It does the same on corporate campuses. The company is also putting together instructional videos and other online content to inform customers about driving EVs. Yes, Hertz has also taken a leadership role in building out uh, charging infrastructure, and we have partnered with large energy companies like BP to do exactly that. And, and the objective is to build out large scale, fast charging uh, for the uh, public as well as for our own customers. Uh, and I guess that even though also other companies like BP have made investments at least into the sector of ev and the charging infrastructure behind it i guess they're lost and i guess they made an evil stupid mistake also just like hertz did with their bet on tesla man combating the anti-tesla propaganda on a daily basis is a battle everyone loves to hate tesla and especially the media it gets them the click that they need it gets them the watch because nobody cares outside of that shout outs to hertz for actually doing a lot of OJT on the job training, doing a lot of education and doing the marketing for Tesla, which is also fantastic for a Tesla shareholder. I appreciate Hertz and I wish them great success in their ride sharing venture. It has been doing pretty well, but what I would argue is a 50% growth year over year has been good for Hertz. So, I stamp a new correction and I approve this message that Hertz bet on Tesla was a good bet. See you guys in the next one. I'll do another installment. Everyone loves to hate Tesla. I'm just going to keep pumping out this information for you guys and keep having these open conversations to actually figure out and dig to what's really going on with Tesla and everybody who loves to hate them. Much appreciated. Shout outs to everyone.